All right, welcome back to Morning Mix. Okay, so far I've, uh, I've been in a swamp. Mm -hmm. I've been a pizza cook. I've worked at a charity warehouse. Uh, for this edition of Cliff's Do My Job, we're keeping it a little closer to home. Check this out. All right, so for today's edition of Cliff Do My Job, sometimes you don't have to go too far out of the studio. As a matter of fact, you don't have to go out of the studio at all. Today, our good pal and First Alert meteorologist, Tim Strong, Come on in. is going to teach me how to become a meteorologist. Pleasure to have you here, Nice to sir. meet you, sir. I mean, we've got screen. just about <laughs> all the room in the world we can oh, yeah. muster up here. We have the biggest screen screen. We do. This side of Lucasfilm. So, uh, <laughs> that's impressive. It's Before awesome. we get started on this, everybody always wants to know, you're always in front of the green screen, but how did you become a meteorologist? What I, was it that made you want to do this? I got the bug way back when the, I, I'm going to date myself on this, but that's okay, when the Weather Channel was just getting started, mm -hmm. back in the late 80s. And then my parents realized, like, man, you're watching that. Oh, I'm like, I love this stuff. There's something wrong with the boy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's where it kind of started, but way back when I was a young kid. So, and then I was like, that's what I want to do. And, but... You know, I also played sports in school, so that kind of guided me. But right. then once that was all done, I was like, okay, I got to be an adult and get a job. I got to really start focusing. So I went through meteorology school. Okay, so what was that like? That, it was intense. Yeah. It was intense. It was, uh, I'd, I got a, a broadcast journalism degree while I was a, an undergrad. Um, but then talking to some uh, other meteorologists at different TV stations who I kind of learned under them and did internships and found that hey there's a program where you can go through school online and uh, so that was a three-year process of being in school all the time but and that's kind of where I launched myself got a job doing weather you know while I was in school and so that's you know and fast forward all these years later you're here with us I go from Columbia to Lincoln Nebraska <laughs> To Augusta, Georgia, and now it's been 18 years here. Wow, has it been that long? It's been that long. Okay, so all of that time <laughs> spent learning how to be a Met, yeah. uh, as we call them here. I'm going to get a crash course. So you're going to teach me exactly how to be a meteorologist. We're going to do it, man. We're going to do it right here. You're going to learn. You're going to get all of that knowledge that I took in school in less than five minutes. <laughs> Here goes nothing. Okay. But you already got training on air, okay. my friend. This All is right. going to be a breeze for you. My biggest thing is, and it's probably always a question, everybody wonders how you can see what everybody sees on the green screen. Right. You actually have TVs on both sides, we right? We do. We do. We've got, th we, well, we've got the three. So we've got left and right, and then, of course, the direct camera. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, just like we would show and do uh, tours with kids, we show them. Okay. I see what you see on right. TV at home. But when I turn, this ginormous green wall right. is right there, and there's nothing on it. But, you know, unless production turns off the production image, yes. they'll see the green wall, but it's always what you see at home. And this is also why meteorologists don't wear green yeah. uh, at the same time. You know how much fun that exactly. can be. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. You're a floating head at that yes, point. Yes, you are. All right, so what's my first, uh, what's my first lesson here, so Tim? So you, you get your graphics set up on the computer here. So okay. that's kind of what we'll t we say rundown. What's our rundown going to be? And what's kind of the main story of the, of the day weather-wise? And we usually start and... Uh, the wonderful thing is we've got so many cameras. This is our Grovetown camera. Oh, I think yeah. we have, we might have six or seven different cameras around the city. So we always like, like Godzilla to, in Grovetown. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You can, you can put yourself <laughs> hey, as far yeah. back as you want. Yeah, you can even step up there and put your foot on the street. But you want to you wanna go through and build your graphics and know what's coming up next because you, you want to get to the point where when you're talking about a graphic, and the old clicker, ah, yes. it's like an old remote control from, almost reminds me of like ColecoVision or something, you know, with all those buttons and knobs. Where a lot of people might remember there used to be the uh, wire down the sleeve, right? Right, with yes. The, oh, the, yeah. In yeah. fact, we had one of those at the old building. Of, and if all else failed, that was the one. It was directly hardwired in. And so you kind of go through and you remember, well, what's coming up next? And that just comes with, you know, practice and whatever. Right. So you lead yourself in. You start talking. Because you kind of don't want to get to the point where you're, stopping, clicking, going to the next one. You want to lead yourself through right. each graphic and then 
when that comes up, you start, you know, and then you just, you explore your space, baby. You just move around, you know? <laughs> now, is there something, is it, because uh, I think I've seen this before, we've tried to do this, everything is backwards. It is, it's a right? mirror image. Okay. It's like looking in a mirror at home, so when you're looking straight ahead, what's left is right and what's right is left. That's always messing So that's going to get you at first. Yeah. When you first get it, you're not going to know, wow, I'm... Okay. My vantage point is a little different and off, but... Yeah. Well, I think it's about time for me to try this so, on my own. I think we've got a few graphics for you, Cliff. We'll just let you uh, fire away. I'll back it up here a little bit, and you just kind of click on through here. All right? Only on this show. Okay. That's right. So I'm getting out of the way, and here. now it is on to you. As I said earlier, here goes nothing. All right, as you are traveling around for lunchtime today, we're taking a look at Grovetown. Right now, a current high of 63. Uh, that heat index also around the same at 63. Calm winds down here. And uh, your lunchtime looking pretty good, even though it's a little cloudy outside. Get a better view of what's happening down. And as we look at the temperature later in the day, we'll hit a high of around mid-70s. But uh, going in later into the evening as you enjoy your Cinco de Mayo, uh, you're looking at highs uh, or lows of around 60, high 50s here. And current temperatures around the area right now, uh, looking like everybody's pretty much enjoying the mid 60s. Uh, you got a couple of 70s in the southwest around uh, Statesboro and uh, Somersville, but it looks like it's uh, going to stay pretty balmy for the rest of the area. Get a little closer view of our area here. Uh, we're looking at 64 in Daniel Field, North Augusta at 63, and uh, Columbia looking uh, to be 67. <laughs> Is that Columbia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need new glasses. Uh, looking at uh, 12 o'clock uh, today, calm sky, 67 degrees. Not that breezy, so uh, should be okay as far as any pollen or any uh, any pine stuff flying out there. This is tougher than you think, really. And, and Tim is off on the side right here. You have to come up with everything all the time, don't you? It's all ad lib. Yes, this is definitely not a scripted right part of the news business. <laughs> it is all ad lib. <laughs> you should have led with that. Tim. I did. <laughs> this will step through a different time for it. Hour by hour, looking through Friday, uh, we're going to be getting a little bit of the green. It's coming around the area. However, uh, I wouldn't ruin or wouldn't cancel any of your plans for Cinco de Mayo and also for Revenge of the Sixth. Uh, looking at uh, into Saturday morning, a couple of, couple of clouds across the area, maybe a couple of spots of rain. But other than that, uh, we're going to be looking at a nice, balmy weekend to get you through uh, to the uh, next week. And let's check out your seven day forecast again. 40% chance of scattered showers across the area for Saturday. But again, that's nothing uh, important that's going to make you have to cancel any of your outdoor plans. Just be sure that you bring a parka. Do people wear parkas anymore? What is okay. a parka anyway? I don't really know. It's like, <laughs> is that like a fancy word for a job? Rain jacket or something? I was thinking a trash bag with a hole in it so you can put your head through. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. You did it. Uh, Badly, you did it, but sir. I did it. And I think that took less than 10 minutes, like I said. You are, you are ready to fill in. Really? It felt like a lifetime. Uh, it kind of does. <laughs> but that, yeah, you're exactly right. It is mostly, that's, that is one of the things that we tell people because they ask, do you have a script or whatever? Well, I make one mentally. Right. It's all, yeah. basically, forecasting is ad-lib. There is no mental here, so I didn't put together. Tim, I appreciate it very much. Hey, you this did is, well, sir. This is why he's on the green screen and I'm in the kitchen. But when I need to be off, you get Cliff. Only if your luck changes.